Howdy folks, welcome to another Third World Garage video. Now, before I get started, this video is actually being done because a subscriber had kind of kind of requested it, or maybe it's not a subscriber, or a viewer, but either way, someone had asked, what are the normal readings on this Geiger counter? First, a disclaimer, I am not a professional in health physics. I don't have a degree in health physics. I don't do anything, actually every single thing you will ever see on this channel is not something that I have a professional opinion about. I'm just an ordinary person, just like you, who happens to have some interesting and divergent interests. But anyway, let me get back to the story. Now, it asks what the normal ranges are on this. Now this here is our battery test. And as you can see, unfortunately, the batteries are kind of weak in this thing now. But you can see that because if you see that line between two and three, um, it's that's that's actually the battery checkpoint. That's where it's supposed to be. So if the battery is kind of weak, but we're still going to carry on anyway. Now, this is the probe, the pickle probe, whatever you want to call it, of our uh, of our Soviet Geiger counter, um, whatever these things are. I think it's a DP5B or DP5B. Um, and what we're going to look at is we're going to put it on the check source. So here we have this is our beta shield open, this is beta shield closed, and this is on check source. This is a yttrium 90, actually it's strontium 90 and yttrium 90 um, source, and it's gone through about one half life. Let's just call that 30 years. This unit is from 1991, um, so it's getting close to its first half life. So keep that in mind. Yours is going to differ because of when your unit was made and also how well charged your battery is. That's the highest setting right there, and that will actually be on the small glass tube inside, not on the SPM20 or STS5, whichever unit yours has. They're both roughly the same. At times 1000, we still got nada. Nada. A little bit of something. When we get to the times 10, let's see where it comes up. It's actually a really nicely damp movement. The Soviets did a very good job on this, on this device. And these are kind of an iconic Geiger counter, one of the reasons I own it, as these would have been used by the liquidators at the uh, Chernobyl nuclear power plant after the um, tragic events of 1986. With the, uh, and if you don't know what that is, then you're probably not a nuclear history enthusiast like I am, or anybody who, you know, doesn't live in a cave. Well, let's go to times one. There we go. We're going all the way off the chart, and of course, the times point one, we will also be off the chart. And see it says the MP slash, it looks like a backwards four. That's in milli rentkin per hour. And then the one below it is in rentkin per hour, which is the larger scale. And that's used for your 200, which is your highest, um, your highest ranking you can have. And we'll just go backwards again, show you very slowly how that works. And I'm going to show you something else kind of cool with these. Let's see, even at the times 100, it's still max. It's, huh? it's coming back down now. Remember I said about it being damped? Well, that's just like the fuel gauge in your car is damped against excessive movement. They'll use a capacitor in the circuit, and that capacitor will store some energy, and that will keep it more level and yeah I need new batteries for this and you always want to move these these uh, switches slowly it's not meant to be cranked really quickly you can actually damage the unit by doing that 
and we don't want to damage a Cold War relic like this. Because the thing is just cool the way it is. And we'll turn it off. Now, remember what I said about something cool? Wait one second while I turn off the lights. They are a uh, luminet. They have a luminescent type dial. I'll center it a little bit better. It also has a light switch, so that it has a backup. Now this this is unfortunately the luminous paint isn't really uh, that long for this world anymore. After this is a 1991 unit, so it's almost 30 years old. Um, but that is one of the interesting things about the Soviets is that they made things that were like double and triple redundant in a lot of cases. And this, if you had dead batteries, it had a car battery adapter that also comes in the main kit, along with a wand that, and also all of the sample bags, the bags you put over the unit to keep it from contamination. All that came with the unit. Now, we are going to, because it's, it's going out of service, and I'm not testing it anymore. We're going to go ahead and turn it one crank and that will put it to this position. You can see that strontium 90 with all of its, um, all of its alpha, all of its alpha and beta radiation. And it's actually a very, very light gamma. And that's one of the reasons they used strontium 90 as a check source. Um, it did damage the metal in the plating. So we're going to put it back on that setting. I think. Okay, so we're going to go over one, over one again. Okay, so if we go over one. Uh, that's not. Yeah. Okay. Put it back here to uh, to K. Yeah, I'll leave it on K. Move it to L, upside down L, and it's going to be revealing that. And that right there is with the beta shield open. So this is a beta shield closed. What you would do there is this is for reading gamma only. So you would have to have um, something that emits a lot of gamma radiation um, to, to be able to do that. And this allows you to differentiate between them. So, you know, again, an interesting little device to have, a Geiger counter. Not necessarily useful in normal life. Oh, if you're wondering what the X means, what that is, is it allows you to zero the gauge once it's really been peaked out, as, so that it, it just, it basically grounds the system. You hit that, it'll go all the way to zero, and then it'll start its, start its new readings again a second time. And once again, really neat kind of device inside of the tube we have actually right here a soviet screwdriver that came with the kit and i don't have my normal level of lighting because i didn't but basically inside here you i'm not going to bother taking it apart you have your spm 20 tube and the other tube which i don't remember the name of it but it's a small glass tube that um, is for really high range radiation. So basically what this does is, if you're familiar with the American system, American the American um, civil defense meters, you basically get, you had two that you would use for the one, functions of this one unit. So this would do the functions of the CDV 700 and a CDV 715 together in one unit. And it's actually a lot more compact. As we can see with, I'll put it next to one of my CDV 715s. And as you can see, this thing is much larger, but this was designed in the latter part of the 1950s, early 1960s. This one is late 60s and was originally from um, Texas Department of Health and would have been used in their civil defense program back in the day. And it doesn't work. Most of them don't. But this is this or this or not your 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 least clunky way to have radiation detection. Now, something like this would be a little bit better. This is a really good 
And again, this is a really good um, kind of a bargain choice right now because you can get them for 50 to 75 bucks used on eBay. And this will do alpha, but it doesn't do very high range. So keep that in mind. If you're just looking for something to screw around with, with some samples and some radium clocks, that's fine. These are cool to have. So are these, the survey meters, but this isn't a Geiger counter, it's a survey meter, but the Geiger counter, the 700 is the same case size. Basically looks almost the same, except for the handle has the pickle probe attached to it. But, you know, they're kind of neat to have, although they are just basically door stops for the most part, because this will not, if you have one of these and it's reading, it's either broken or you need to run and run quickly to the nearest shelter because either a nuclear power plant near you has exploded and you're very close to it or a nuclear bomb has just gone off and you didn't realize that you're at ground zero. So that's the only way this thing has any value at all to you. This thing on the other hand, yeah, you can play around with it. It's kind of a cool toy. Anyways, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And this has been another Third World Garage video covering radioactive stuff and specifically this Chernobyl style um, Geiger counter. Anyways, have a good day.